I was molested by my brother when I was about six or seven. How old was he? He's four years older, so he was 11-ish. Was that my law of attraction? No, it's your mother's law of attraction. Okay, how? Um, I can go into a long explanation. Do you want to be personal with it or do you want to be? Let's go with it, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> your mother had some sexual molestation events in her life, in her childhood, and she never healed them. And because of that, when you were born as a female, you absorbed all of these sexual, uh, these events. And, and that caused that to be attracted in your family towards yourself as well. But it's actually your mother's law of attraction. So remember you were there in the parenting discussion that we had. And you remember we talked about how the parents' emotions get, get absorbed by the child, which creates the child's law of attraction. And then the child acting out those things actually causes the parent to be triggered. So the whole point of the, the exercise, I suppose you could say, is that in the end, your mother, if she had dealt with her emotions about the molestation that occurred in her own family towards herself, then what would have happened would be that you would never have attracted this event. Does that make sense? So it's your mother's law of attraction that created the event. The problem for you now is that you've got these feelings associated with the molestation. And so, um, and your mother still is not dealing with her feelings about it. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so the question you need to ask yourself now is, right, am I going to wait for the rest of my life for mum to deal with it, or am I going to really start looking at all of the emotions involved with what went on? So you have some emotions of shame about what went on, some emotions that you feel like, how did maybe you encouraged it, is some emotions that you feel and some other emotions about men generally. There's a feeling of anger towards men that you have that's quite strong as a result of those events. And so allow yourself to step into that anger and then, and, you know, these are childhood anger that is that you need to express. So I'd be, again, getting some kind of way of dealing with the anger. Um, so, you know, um, some people here have gotten long sticks of hard rubber hose and got something to beat with it, or some people have got a tennis racket and a, and a baseball bat and, and a punching bag and worked out their anger that way. That's what you'll need to do to connect through the anger into that grief that you feel about those emotions. <coughs> to deal with some of the sexual shame emotions, um, you'll probably first have to um, do things with regard to masturbation and look through and, and just start allowing yourself to feel sexual feelings and then feel the shame and guilt and type of feelings that come up with that. When you're then comfortable with all of that, you'll probably find yourself attracting a relationship, or if you're not in already one, in one already? Are you in one already? No. Um, you will attract a relationship that will then help you work your way through those issues. But my suggestion is do some of that with yourself first, in turn, and confront the issues sexually for, as well. And if you do that, you'll be able to heal it. And when you heal it, you won't have these big barriers up towards men that you currently have. And that will cause, you know, a man to be attracted into your life if that's your gender preference. So, was it mum's issues that made my brother do that as well, or was it something else that made him It was do probably that? your dad's issues that made your brother do that. Uh, but, um, but also, your mum's issues uh, caused any male in the family would automatically feel superior to a female in the family, in your family. And you think about your siblings and you can see that straight away. You can see your father has that uh, viewpoint um, and your mother has this lesser, on the lesser person viewpoint. So your mother has quite a bit of anger with men still though, of course, because of the things that have happened to her. So it's a combination of the emotions of your father and your mother. Your mother attracted your father because of her emotions and because of his emotions. So his emotions were domineering towards women, that women are there for my pleasure, and a combination of that situation created your brother's emotions, and that's what caused that abuse to occur. It's a very common thing in families for this to occur because of the combinations of emotions of the parents. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you. So I've still got to deal with that anger. Still got to deal with the anger. <laughs> yeah. So allow yourself to step into the anger. Many. Many uh, women are so self-conscious about rage that they never allow themselves to step into it. And this is why many women who have been abused get depression. Because they're shutting down their rage so much that they get into depression instead and they become you know, uh, 
so you know, not concerned or not feeling anything, then you don't want to get into that state. So allow yourself to connect with the rage firstly, and then step underneath the rage and then down into the sadness and the grief that's there and the shame that's there. But the rage is sort of in a way your doorway into it. And next week we're going to have the session on anger, so that may help you. I'll just, be there. Yeah, get into that. Yeah. Can I ask one question related sure. to that? Were you able to feel the or did you have to no, show? one of the events actually happened, if I can go into detail, um, sitting at, at the table while the rest of the family were around there, he pretended to drop a pen and went under the table. So I was getting molested while my freaking family were right there. So you were not able to scream? No. Scream. Uh, so scream you now. Scream. Find a place and just scream your heart out and do it alone. Yeah. And, and in fact, that event that you just mentioned, is a really good way to connect with some of that anger. <laughs> you see you have anger with mum and dad as well. Is that, you know, why didn't they notice this thing going on, you know? And and you have some anger with your brother, of course, understand that. It's crippled my entire relationship with him. Yeah. I've basically not been able to look at him or talk to him ever since. Of course. Yeah. So you know what? Yeah. Twenty five years later. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can work through those emotions it's going to help you a lot. Yeah. You you'll be you'll be surprised at how different the game feels. Yeah. It, took, it took me, uh, I've had a lot of uh, sexual abuse type emotions to work through from the first century experience of my soulmate that I took on when I entered in, this, in the second experience. And it, I've had quite a lot of them um, to work my way through. And it took me, without God, it took me around four or five years to work through them. Um, what I found during that time was that there were many people with sexual abuse is issues that, I, that my law of attraction would bring into my life. And in fact, I was a member of an adult survivors of child abuse uh, um, uh, group for some time. And, and during that time, I found that the majority of people weren't connecting with their causal emotion in dealing with sexual abuse. They, were, they, stayed, they stayed in their rage. And, and this is going. This is what's damaging your life right now. Is you've, there's this rage there that's not letting, but you're in the rage, and it's quite. It comes up quite easily. The, the key is if you can get into the rage, but then step down underneath that into the grief and the sadness that you feel. So there was a lot of sadness under that statement you just made earlier. A lot of sadness about how can my family not have known what was going on there, you know. And to be frank with you, your mother and father wanted to ignore it. Your mother wanted to ignore it because it was to do with her own abuse issues. Your father wanted to know it because, because he felt that, that men could do that to women and, uh, and, and to girls. So, so there are some core emotions there. The key is to not understand those emotions on the others, but that the others have, but actually let yourself feel your own emotions. If you do that with God, so if you talk to God about these emotions, you find you work through it really rapidly, and a year later you can be healed of a lot of the majority of those emotions. Be brave. With be brave. Even trying to go down that path because um, yep. denial is great. <laughs> well, it's not great. Yeah, but it stops you from feeling it. Well, yeah, um, but it stops you from experiencing the rest of your life. Like this is the problem I had to face as well: was that did I want to experience the rest of my life or not? And if I, if I did, I needed to heal those emotions. Does that make sense? So and the, the key is to allow yourself to go into the emotions. You will have a hard time allowing yourself. <coughs> but if you talk to God about it and allow yourself to work through it, you find a year later you can be so free of all of these things that you'll wonder why you held on to them for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just allow yourself to 